We have a fantastic revenge story today about someone who refused to give anyone their most recent phone number. We will discuss that later. First, though, one of my favorite pastimes is to follow my critics' older siblings in order to let them know how well I'm doing. During a difficult time in my life, several of my longtime friends turned on me and became my worst critics. My career took off after years of working in silence and isolating myself. I relocated to a desirable area of the nation and met the love of my life. I got to take pictures of some of my old friends' favorite bands and the Rolling Stones. One day, when all the big names were on Instagram, my single biggest hater's older brother was recommended as a follower, despite having a private profile. I followed him because I was being arrogant at the time and thought, yeah, I bet he wants to see all my cool stuff too. I find out that this older brother went to my biggest enemy and showed him my photo of his favorite band, along with an alleged comment about how attractive my fiancé is right out of his phone, and he detested it naturally. I now follow that garbage if any brother or relative of the people who have hated me has a private profile. They must so review my profile and decide whether to accept or reject me in the hopes that they will spread the word about me to their hateful relatives. I know this is insane. But it makes sense in this context, Dot. You may argue that OP is taking things a bit too far, but in all honesty, OP is essentially taking the best form of retaliation, that is, leading a wonderful life. Allow individuals to enter. Haters are envious of you because they desire what you possess but are unable to obtain it. Jaded Fan 3561 made the comment that your actions reveal your own insecurities. You wouldn't care what others thought of you or of them if you were genuinely comfortable and confident in your current position. Again, you are dependent on online strangers to validate your behavior. I mean, absolutely, I'm full of insecurities, Opie said in response. That's what made me act odd and petty. Sub to evaluate the virtues of others. I have never had much to be proud of, and now I have few friends with whom to share it. Dot made me feel a little resentful, despite my involvement. Hello everyone, my name is Steven, and I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review or a like if you enjoyed these fantastic tales of retribution, assuming you're following my podcast. That being stated, we connected up with Dude Lie for our next story without realizing he gave away all of his authority. Dot, I quote, L, try to make this brief because I tend to ramble. While getting ready for work one morning... I replied to a Tinder message from a man who, coincidentally, worked in my brother-in-law's industry. Since several of the guys were acquainted, I brought up my brother Dash in Dash Law. He claimed to have worked in shifts at several sites and to have known him but not actually known him. We spoke for a little while throughout the morning when he abruptly mentioned that because of his open marriage and some quirks, secrecy was very essential to him. He desired to remain anonymous as a mediator. Red flag. I let the conversation to end there. My sister phones me in the afternoon when I'm at work. She seldom calls when I'm working, so this worries me, so I move aside to answer the phone. She begins the call by asking, Hey, are you guys seeing a guy in husband's field of work? To wrap up the conversation. What? I exclaimed. No. Why? She responds, It's because this guy from Tinder is telling everyone he's bringing my husband's sister-in-law not realizing that her husband's best buddy is actually temping at their place. Husband, quote, S best friend texted him right away to tell him to avoid the guy because he's a crazy, drunken piece of junk. I answer, oh, is he okay now? Embrace the challenge. Inform your brother-in-law to tell his closest friend about how I told Tinder dude that I couldn't reach the horizontal half unless I squatted over his face and gave him a taste of my liquid gold. He began pleading with me and called me mama when I answered no. You're the joke, guy. Although I don't give a damn about what people think of me, I am aware that you do. The story began with you. I put an end to it. I never heard from him again after he unpaired me on Tinder. However, the fact that my brother-in-law used the term culture stories makes me think that he has likely been exposed to jokes about his phallus and mother fetishes for a very long time. I would be irresponsible if I did not ask. Therefore, I must. In any case, what kind of workplace culture do they operate in, where it would be okay to learn about topics like mother fetish and somebody's liquid gold? More along the lines of, I understand, there will always be office gossip, but is it really just a typical aspect of work culture? All set, conflict.
1887 made a comment. In fact, this was some of the best advice I ever received in high school. A guy I'd never even spoken to before tried to boast about hooking up. My answer? No, I fled because he had a strange rash down there. I want no part of syphilis. Though similarly immature, it quickly put an end to the speculations dot commented by Derpy Gamer Plant. In junior high, there was this guy who wanted to rape every lady in the face. It's safe to say that I had no interest. He did, however, lie and sleep with me. When I sobbed uncontrollably to my mother, she told me to make things up. Thus, we did. I told the school's gossipy gossip girl dot yes comma, but I won't do it once more. It was a meager deal for him. I was unable to sense it at all, in two motors. That's when I bleated like a goat. It was peculiar. Throughout junior high, he was a chilly goatee wearer. This is the narrative we will tell next. Mother-in-law. I opted to give myself a gift, instead of thinking my spouse should have gotten one for becoming a father. When I was expecting a few years ago, my mother-in-law said that my husband should have a unique present to commemorate becoming a father. In the meantime, a month before my birthday, I didn't even get a cake. I didn't reply even though I felt horrible. This is when I got my little retribution. I had planned to treat myself to a Rolex as a birthday present a few months prior before I became pregnant. A few days have passed since my mother-in-law made her remark. The salesperson called to let me know that my watch was ready to be picked up. When I picked it up, I made the decision to purchase it immediately. I stated to my mother-in-law in passing that I had purchased the watch for myself because I would soon become a mother. Now, comma, the jealousy was virtually audible in her voice. She believed that my spouse should be honored, but I pampered myself, so every time I wore it, I couldn't help but smile. Perhaps trivial. However, sometimes all you need to do is celebrate a small triumph for yourself. Therefore, when the baby arrives, I really understand the need to provide your kids stuff, time, and things that are healthy for the infant dot. Is it typical to get a completely unique gift for your child as a way to honor their becoming fathers? However, in the event that a parent want to give their child a unique present in recognition of their new role as a parent, does that imply that they have an obligation to buy anything for their children's partner as well? Pachyderm remarked, upset. That's the purpose of Father's Day. Aside from that, the birth of the child will be his unique gift. What more could a happy father ask for? The girl in our next story sought to have her shotgun returned after reconciling with her ex. My current ex is also getting divorced. I'm told that throughout the years, her soon-to-be ex had taken her shotgun and on multiple occasions ran in their beds while wearing the exact items dot Besides, comma, he's a convicted felon and isn't allowed to own guns. He seemed to have moved back in, so she decided to dump me and wanted her shotgun back. I also wanted to remove my pistol from his reach. I took off the firing pin when I gave her shotgun back. So it's not functional anymore, but he gets to pretend it does dot. Now that only my brother and I are aware of it. Really not sure who else to inform. You kind of set me up for this relationship and then broke it off just to come back, which makes it really comical. All I know is that if I were in Opie's shoes and knew even the most basic information, I would protect what is rightfully yours, take it away from them, and then clear your name of any involvement whatsoever. I would not want to be a part of any manipulation of the material in any way. Being in the clear would not be desirable. Knowing what's going on would not be something I would want. You, your partner, and your lawfully owned firearm, entirely at your discretion. Not my concern at this time. Bobby, the amazing dog, made a comment. I'm going to take a risk here and say that making this not your problem should be your first goal, not to seem legalistic, but from what I gather, at least in the area where I live, you are not allowed to own a firearm in your home, not even if it is someone else's. Her guy can't be near that gun, but you haven't exactly broken the law by giving up your ex's stuff. Give the local police station a call and explain the situation. Dot, move on with your life and lock up your ex's phone number. We can't wait to pump petrol again in our next story. Costco has good gas. I was at the island's furthest pump yesterday, not 30 seconds after going back in my car, but as usual, I filled up my tank. I'm more important than you club member honked. At first, I didn't even realize he was in the car right behind me when he gave me a hug. Who, comma, after all, would do that? Then he horned once more. 
I noticed his irritated demeanor when I glanced in my rearview mirror. Time for a little revenge. I keep track of my miles, the price per gallon, my expenditure, etc. When I fill up my tank, I took my time doing that, I promise. I started my engine when the automobile in front of me was ready to proceed after a short while. I took sure to stay away from the pump for as long as I could to avoid Meister. In addition to keeping him from swiftly pulling into the space I was clearing, I'm more important than you in getting past me to the open place in front of me. He wasted between 60 and 90 years of his life on me teasing. I found it humorous that he was such a conceited jerk. I'm curious how he interpreted it. That kind of guy definitely represented a nuclear reactor meltdown, that kind of boiling hot rage that makes you almost want to punch the glass, the steering wheel, or something else. It takes a lot for me to reach that point of rage, but I'm aware that's when I become much more illogical, Dot. It sounds like you think you're more important than him, Colorado French said. Is there a specific reason you choose to go slowly and complete this task in a public area rather than in peace and quiet at home? After logging back in, R2-D2 said, no kidding, when he mentioned 30 seconds. I too would have been irritated. Those lines never seem to end. I like folks who pull up with their cards ready and then drive off after getting back into their cars, making other people wait while they do things that they could do while they wait for the pump or after they get out of the way. Our next tale involves me getting retribution after a coworker defamed me. I was doing some light work in the kitchen, basically preparing food. Poor work, to be honest. Nevertheless, one of the servers discovered that I was living in a tent and that my rent was out of control. He or she then told everyone about it at work and began making crude remarks about me in front of other employees, such as asking me to share his bed, dot wink, comma wink. I began telling others that my stopping our sexual relationship was the reason he was upset with me. We never carried it out. After a while, his girlfriend found out, and they got into a heated argument. I never heard from him again. I feel like my heart would genuinely break if I overheard this while I was working in the kitchen. I remember laughing when I heard about someone who was living in a tent and working a menial job preparing food, and others were making jokes about how nice it would be for them to sleep in my bed, which seemed like the most sleazy thing they could do. I can't for the life of me fathom the mindset, said Common Chester. I discovered that my prep cook was homeless. I imparted all my culinary knowledge to him. I helped him secure an apartment and found him a respectable job when he was ready. His life is now regular, and he has a wonderful girlfriend. I said, I freaking love my cat. All I want to say is that I appreciate what you've done. I found a job at a casino while homeless dot Deb Kama, a stunning elderly angel, was in a similar circumstance to you. She was the only person who showed me kindness after learning that I was homeless. She pulled all the strings from her job at the casino and allowed me to use her as a reference. I'll wait 10 years before the boss fires me. I was absent from work. One man attacked autism. I quote, am happy, have a stable career, can work from home, and live in a great place right now. I sincerely appreciate what you've done. When your coworkers learn that you're homeless, they typically become uncomfortable and disgusted. I appreciate you not being that way. Next up on the blog is wrong number. I used to get calls in my work's direct line from Carl's Jr. employees with broken deep fryers. Years ago, I quote him, not sure if Carl's Jr. listed the incorrect number, if my number was the same but had the incorrect area code, or if my number was similar to the repair line. All I know is that I used to get calls from terrified staff members at a different Carl's Jr. once a week or so. I would explain to them that Carl's Jr. is not where I worked, that the repair line was not this. Kindly update the listing for your phone number. This continued for around half a year. When I finally had enough, I assured the caller that I would have someone fix it in an hour. Recurred the following week. In an hour, I'll send someone to fix it. After that, Carl's Jr. staff were never heard from again. Dot I quote, V undoubtedly heard a lot of tales like this one. And the most frequent thing I hear people do is become so irritated with these callers that they mistake them for someone else like a pizza business or barber. They'll just say things like, oh, that's okay, let's just book you for Monday at 8 a.m. The business they are attempting to contact will eventually ensure that their clients receive the correct phone number, Dot Chair commented. A few years ago, I had bill collectors calling my new recycled phone number. They kept calling for months, 
but I eventually lost it and told them to call me again if they found the individual. That thing is debtor to me. They never got back to me. The requirement for attention in the classroom is the topic of our following narrative. Being the tiniest student in the class, one of the teachers required us to write our solutions to a problem on the board when we were freshmen in high school. The challenge was that we had to draw our classmates' attention before giving a brief lecture on how to solve a word math problem. I tried shouting but got no answer. I was way too mushy. Give it another go. Ignored with your arms folded and your foot tapping as if the teacher is never there. Not for a 95-pound wimp like me. So disregard that. Three, go nuclear with plan C. I knew how to produce the screech of chalk. I took hold of two pieces. And you tilt up until it echoes while holding it lightly by the back and pushing at a low angle. I made both pieces of the long chalkboard shriek by starting at one end. Scream, remember twice at the same moment. Both hands scream, spin around and observe. The entire class is shocked, squinting their eyes in agony and shielding their ears. I'm grinning evilly. Teacher laughs as she looks at me. She has also covered her ears. I solved my issue on the whiteboard. Everybody is silent, listening intently and paying attention. That's how it is now. I can still clearly picture a young woman with a large owl on her face and her hands clapping on her ears. It's my turn again next week. I grab a pair of chalk, apply pressure to the board, spin around, and observe. Whoa, dot everyone is focusing. After seeing one described, a young lady who was a classmate became a lecturer. I have to admit, begs you not to repeat that. All you have to do is build that reputation, and others will take notice, show respect, or at the very least remember you and your actions. Joe Petty, 72, said, That's how you do it. A few occasions, I've shocked a raucous class or group to silence using the drill teacher voice at quote, S. Incredibly helpful, because although I might spill over into the classroom, I usually don't raise my voice. Someone said, I have a friend who was a sergeant in the army, in reference to Zurab, short-lived position. He was in artillery, although I don't think he taught drill. I was shocked and afraid when he used his drill instructor voice during a fight with his wife. Other than that one instance, I haven't heard him use it. Our next tale is that you need to have made sure the catalytic converters on my truck were functional before stealing them. When it was turned, it wasn't as hilarious. It was a good morning at the start of the previous week. At 2.45 a.m., I wake everyone up by starting up my truck. To find out that the hollowed-out cats were stolen, dot... The fools failed to notice the neighbor's cameras, which essentially revealed their identity. Two local children drive around in a really wrecked police crown Vic. I decided not to dial 911. Rather, I contacted a friend of mine who works in code enforcement and explained my strategy. He then informed the police that I would eventually perform a nuisance tow on the same Crown Victoria. The vehicle they drive is street legal, even though it has a rubbish sound system, no insurance, no license plates, and broken taillights. It also rattles like crazy. They also smoke in a chicken shack all day long. I'm not sure where they're obtaining their money, but I assume that part of the deal involved stealing catalyst. I called it in and gained permission to tell when I saw the automobile parked on a quiet street. I brought it right to the police station, where they attempted to utilize the VIN number to do an owner check. They discovered that the car had not been registered since 2011, and that the owner wasn't the youngsters who sold them the car without a title due to all the outstanding registration debt. By the time the police said we could take it to the junkyard to obtain a certificate of destruction, or black title, the two morons were frantically searching the entire town for the automobile. It, quote, it's a joke that they think one of their friends stole it. Any automobile key could be used to unlock it because the key lock was so worn out. When they discovered it at the junkyard, they attempted to steal it, with one of them diverting the owner's attention while the other took their automobile. However, the drive shaft was already severed because the junkyard knew who they were. They were jailed for attempting to take their automobile back, and from what I saw, they watched as the junkyard used a crane to tear the car to pieces. Upon seeing the remnants, I thought a youngster had just torn it to the bare frame out of curiosity. They haven't left their trailer even after being released from prison. Earlier that day, I drove by and saw a beat-up Jeep Liberty in their driveway, also without license plates, that they were already working with the police to take, if I happened to see it in public. However, the following time, 
I won't miss the show. Sounds like a couple of frontrunners that do nothing but kind of just ruin the town and the people who become well-known in it. When you see them in their beat-up Jeep Liberty, you think, oh great, those boneheads again. And they get crushed comments dot two were removed from two cars for me. Not to add the headache these folks cause you and the seeming helplessness or unwillingness of the authorities to take action. These guys do more harm than good. Excellent work. Justice was done. OPP replied that police have been aware that it's them, but they are unable to stop it since, in the event that they are apprehended, they will have nothing on them. We intended to steal their SUV as soon as we spotted it parked in a public place because of this. The second tale is that my sister's cups were all thrown out by my brother-in-law. To annoy him, we delivered her new items instead of wrapping them as he had promised. In order to be near his parents, my sister's husband and her moved to Arkansas. He advised her against packing her cups, saying he would do it and bring them back on a future trip. Instead, he disposed of all of her mugs. Here's what my dad, stepmother, and I did to annoy him. My father sent her two mugs. She only has one pan, so my stepmom sent her a set of blue diamond pots and pans, dotted quote, S the set in pink, ordered for her by my stepmother. Me? I sent them a pair of adorable ceramic marshmallow mugs, a cookie mug with a space for a cookie holder on the bottom, and an Oreo mug set that included a mug, a cookie dunker, and cookie tongs. The cookie dunker was a great addition, in my opinion, since you'll find it adorable and detest him for being a worthless tool. I suppose this resonated with me on a deep level, since I'm the type of person who likes pretty mugs or just mugs with a neat design, regardless of shape. In addition, I acquired far too many odd pieces for my kitchen, things that are so specialized you almost ever use them. Although I don't really have one, let's take an example of something like a slab job. The types of things you see and go, oh, that's cool, I could use that. After that, you only use it once. You just never look at it again since you don't want to deal with cleaning it, extracting it from the rear shelf's bottom, or anything else, oh, comma. I forgot to include that in the piece, but none of this has arrived yet, Opie wrote in a follow-up remark. The pots and pans will arrive first, followed by the remaining items on various days. Karen attempted to spoil our delight of seeing the northern lights in our next narrative. Here in our hometown, my spouse and I count ourselves among the fortunate individuals who witnessed the Aurora Borealis. I hadn't planned where we were going to watch it, so on the way home we made a stop at a little local park with a good view of the sky— since the park officially closes in 30 minutes, we mostly just enjoyed our alone time gazing at the northern lights. There were five minutes left until the park closed, and we were ready to head out dot. Just as we were getting into our car, a car appears out of nowhere and drives toward us. With a grating tone, she pulled down her window and asked, What the heck are you guys doing here? I responded, naively, that we were trying to find a clear place to see the northern lights. Then she added something like, well, since you shouldn't be here, that's a good reason for me to call the police on you. The last thing we wanted was to trespass and get into jail, so we double-checked that it was unlawful to enter the park. The worst part of this is that she was running for the EPA, House of Representatives for our local district, and her car had a large sticker of that person. We reside in a rural area of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is a well-known swing state in our district that is purple. I was not the candidate the woman is endorsing. I already knew who I would vote for. So I asked who that person is, feigning to be indifferent to politics. She continued talking about that woman and how amazing she was. Then I answered, Well, you just made me feel like I should make the extra effort to register and vote against her and whatever party she belongs to. She was rendered speechless as her mouth fell open. Then she insulted me and called me derogatory names. I said, not bothering to listen, isn't democracy like a bench? Perhaps the next time you should mind your own business. As we drove away, I heard what sounded like a burst tire while she continued to drive, and I rolled up my window. My tires were okay, and we were the only two cars there. There is an indescribable amount of karma involved if her tire actually burst at that precise moment. I sincerely hope that someone was intended to be present at the park. Not like some random woman on Karen patrol, either. I anticipated that many would want to remain since they would be thrilled to see the Northern Lights here, comma, over time. I'm going to report you to the police. You just want to say, 
Freaky you and freak all that to people like that. The ideal park in our neighborhood for seeing cosmic events like that has gates that automatically close at nightfall. You stand for this haze. However, if you're in the parking lot when the gates close, you can stay as late as you'd like since an electronic eye will detect your vehicle and open the gates automatically for you. At least that's what the placard says. Dot the next tale is, you are your own retaliation. I'm pals with my boss. We share an office and ride together. My favorite lunch was served to me by my wife today. The boss said it smelled nice, but like onions. I finished most of it, but I had to quickly get up from my desk to do something urgent. Between five and seven minutes. My employer had thrown away the remainder of my lunch when I returned because she was starting to grow sick of the odor dot she got, even by throwing what was remained of my meal into the garbage can in our shared office. Now, nobody can go into the workplace. She threw away her old lunch, Therefore, I always take it to the dumpster to avoid lunch stench. It was not removed by me. By morning, the lingering traces of today's lunch will fill our office with the aroma of delicious small-time retaliation. Unless your company is prepared to pay for the ostentatious garbage cans with the odor-blocking liners that aim to mimic scent. They didn't resolve any of the issues, as Opie noted. To be more precise, opening the window and throwing it outside would have been a better idea than placing it in an open garbage can dot. You do realize that your supervisor doesn't really respect you, GPB 230 said. Delete the remaining portion of your meal. Who the hell makes that up? Our next tale is about a HOA to which I was not a member cutting down my tree. I set that moron on fire. Many people who saw my post in slash freak HOA suggested that I repost it here. I gave it a quick tidy up. This was approximately 10 years ago. In the neighborhood, my house is the first one behind others. I'm standing on the edge. My front yard is located on a separate street that isn't a member of the HOA, but the street on the side of my house is. I asked them if I could pay their HOA dues when I moved so my kids could use the playground and pool right across the street. Nope. My HOA began to visit me after I planted a mulberry tree on the corner of my property, claiming that my branches were too low to the ground and that this was against their HOA rules. I informed them that you would see my kids swimming in the pool if I were a homeowner. They would have to deal with my tree since they didn't quote T. Even though they are now in their 20s, my kids still like the tree and visit it every spring to pick berries. Then, one day, I returned home to find that a large limb from the tree that reached out into the street had been chopped off. I made every effort to track down the perpetrator, but they remained silent, and I was unable to discover anyone. I then used PVC to rebuild the branch and covered it with dazzling Christmas lights. I wrapped the remaining portion of the tree just to be sure. I also performed it poorly. It looked terrible and was propped up with some rope and some old branches I discovered in the woods. Those lights were on until shortly before Christmas when I turned them off. A few of the letters they sent me ended up in the trash. I ordered the HOA members to shut up when they arrived to my house demanding to be taken down because it was the entrance to their area and I was presumably having an impact on property values. But they never actually tampered with the lights. They must have been concerned about what I would pull next. I went to check my Facebook and saw a picture. I obtained... While it lacks some lights, the majority of the terrible splendor is visible. The tree wound is visible about a foot above the fictitious branch. Because they got away with it the first time, I believe the real reason they probably didn't tamper with the tree again was because they probably accomplished most of what they set out to do. Dot, they can't do it again because, well, it's probably safe to assume that they might go out of their way to ensure that there's some sort of security recording especially with OHP turning on all those lights and stuff. Well astute enough to avoid making the same mistake twice? Garage said he was heading south. I know someone who is in a comparable circumstance. Corner house outside of Hoadot. He put an old white toilet at the edge of his property and planted a fake flower in it the first time they tried to mess with him. You won't alter your phone number is the subject of our next tale. I accept the challenge. I gave Christine my phone number more than three years ago. She obviously didn't want her life's baggage to go with her new number, dot debt collectors. Both male and female, old claims. If nothing else, she was prolific, as well as others. This makes sense to me. And Christine, I hope that today is better in your new life. That collectors quickly gave up. 
It's been two years since I heard from one of those. Even though they were very persistent, some of the old flames eventually gave up. Her former lover's last text message was received about a year ago. Dot personal appointments with family, mostly text confirmations, were the main source of difficulty. Why did they confirm and then cancel with her employer and with doctors, hairdressers, nail salons, etc.? Family still occasionally calls or texts me, perplexed as to why Christine withheld her new information. I apologize for not being able to better understand her intentions while the calls and texts were coming in. I clarified that it's no longer her phone number. Dot kindly ask her to update her information. Standard fare for someone who has changed their phone number. People would express gratitude. Over time, we'll get her to provide updates. I was growing increasingly irritated as this went on. I started to bother other people by citing HIPAA aid to medical professionals. This made a small difference, but overall, nothing changed because personal appointments continued to come in over a year later. It had to end. I took on the task of enforcing change. Up until the day before, when the final confirmation is usually sent out, I disregarded confirmation messages. I called off all of it. Obstetrician, postpone your hair appointment, postpone your lawyer appointment. If they call to confirm, then cancel. I apologize, Christine. Can't continue to make it. She began to change her number slowly. Nobody desires to schedule appointments. They make the cancellation after several weeks or months of waiting. I wish you success in gaining access once more within a reasonable time. Just over a year in, things were at their best. Her supervisor sent me a text. He wanted her to come in early for a special meeting the next day. I did the only reasonable thing and politely quit for her. The next day, I got a very terse text from her boss saying how unprofessional, unkind, not funny, etc. That text was my response. Get Christine to freaking change her number. I then got a pretty expletive laden text from Christine. My response was update her number or I will keep canceling all your appointments. At that point, I don't think she recognized how her appointments were getting canceled. A second, even more obscenity-packed text came. I lolled an answer. Guess what? No more personal appointments dot still the rare family member, though. How lazy can you be? Now I will play devil's advocate for Christine here. I will say that when you change your number, there are probably a good number of things you signed up for and gave your number out for that you just don't really remember that you need to update. Examples of these would be a doctor's office or a barber shop that you may have been going to for years. It quote, S possible that you forgot to change everything to reflect your new phone number. Nevertheless, OP provided them with ample notice. That was not the place it should have come to. As Hockey May Cox noted, people continue to use my email address in this manner. I thus canceled the guy's return ticket. They gave the confirmation to me as well, so he wouldn't find out until he gets to the airport. Dot Love remarked with blah, blah, blah. I canceled his return flight because I was experiencing the same thing. I had sent a ton of emails in response, pleading with them to urge her to stop using my address. One individual requested me to give her email back and was really unpleasant. Based on the wording of the email, I think this person was her spouse. That email was mine. Having used it for more than a decade, I began deleting everything, and when I received the emails about the flight booking, I waited until after takeoff before canceling the return ticket. After that, it ceased for around two years before gradually beginning to occur once more. Getting emails from websites she signed up for, including odd service sites and internet retailers,